court is calling 2016 CR 8204 State of Texas versus Terrence Lee Scott. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brittany Mitchell for the state. Defense? Melissa Christian for the defendant. Are you Terrence Lee Scott? Yes, ma'am. Got to show you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision and state's motion to supplement uh, pending motion to revoke probation. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand them? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Terrence Lee Scott who's placed on community supervision in 2016 CR 8204 for the offense of assault causing bodily injury, family violence enhanced on June 7, 2017 for a term of four years and extended for a total of two years and four months? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. State? <clears throat> On or about the 14th day of June 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Terrence Lee Scott, did then and there fail to submit to drug testing as directed by the court, court officer, supervision officer, and or a duly authorized agent of the court in violation of condition number two. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do not speak behind the court reporter when we're on the record. Oh. All right. To that violation of condition number two, how do you plead? True or not true? True. On or about the 27th day of April, 2023, in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Terrence Lee Scott, did then and there fail to submit to drug testing as directed by the court, court officer, supervision officer, and or a duly authorized agent of the court in violation of condition number two. How do you plead to that true or not true? true? And um, your honor, at, at this time, we'll waive the remaining conditions. Any objection? No, judge. All right, could y'all please whisper in the box? Did you understand by pleading true to violations two and two, the court could find it true, grant the motion, sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine? Sure. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violations two and two? Sure. Court will find two and two true. Is there an agreement? No, Judge. All right, state, what are you requesting? Your Honor, we're requesting revocation um, of the full term. Defense, what are you requesting? Judge, Mr. Scott has been on probation since June of 2017. He did not get a violation report for the first two years he was on probation. Uh, since that time, there have been different alters and amends to address different issues with Mr. Scott. He has been working as a foreman with Tradesman International, provides support to four children. He's had 403 cumulative days in jail. Um, Mr. Scott is not opposed to getting any kind of drug or alcohol treatment. The problem is reporting weekly or having to submit weekly to new ways. He loses his job. And so that's been a complete issue for him. Um, we're asking for some leniency from the court for some thinking outside the box, which this court likes to do, and uh, to assist Mr. Scott or to terminate him because he ter he expires tomorrow. And I, I realize they filed the MTR in time. I'm not making that argument. I'm just saying that he's basically been on six years probation for a four-year term. Right. But here, here's the problem, Mr. Scott. The reason why you have the number of times you need to report is because you violated your probation. I don't add conditions just to add conditions. And you've been before me before June 13, 2019. There was a violation of condition number one. And can you text off the record? Can you text her and let her know I see her in the waiting room and I'm bringing her in right after this? Oh, this one's different. Okay. All right, is that Vaughn? All right. So the probation officer for this case is going to be zooming in shortly. But June 13, 2019, there was a violation of condition number one. And I denied the motion and altered her main conditions. And then September 24th, that really wasn't a violation on your part. That was just a request to change your address. And then we ended up having a contested hearing scheduled 
when we came back in March, there was a violation of condition number 28. And that's when you were extended. And that's when you were told to enroll in the BIP course by March 9th. It's, you either had a choice of doing the patch or either weekly UAs for 30 days and then random UAs thereafter. So you had a choice. You could have done the patch. I, I chose the patch and I was waiting. That's when I got, I went to ISL okay. after that. All right. And then. That was a, last year. Okay. Then on October 25th, we had a violation of condition number one. And the motion was denied. And that's when you went to ISF. And then we tried felony drug court. And then felony drug court, you were not allowed, you were because of your history. So the reason why you're on the UAs is because you haven't been doing what the court has been requesting of you. Online, we have the probation officer. Is there any objection to the probation officer appearing online for the court to see what your client has done? All right. Are you Drew Wallace? I'm just muted. You're muted. Can you hear me now, Judge? Yes. Uh, you. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. Can you state your name for the record, please? Uh, first name Drew, last name Wallace. And are you the probation officer for Terrence Lee Scott? Yes, ma'am, I am. All right. Can you tell the court that the state is asking for revocation? Of course, the defense does not want revocation. She just wants her client to be terminated unsatisfactorily. <laughs> what has he done? So while on probation, uh, so I obtained the case uh, after the probationer completed uh, state ISF. Um, upon completion of state ISF, he was placed into the ISP program. And while in ISP, he, he has not completed anything. Um, the one big thing that I know in order to complete his probation um, was he needed to complete BIP and pay the restitution. And there has been no progress with that BIT course and there has been no uh, payment of that restitution. Okay. So uh, state is asking for revocation. What, what is probation's recommendation in this case? Probation's recommendation at this time was for the probationer, uh, excuse me, is revocation as well. All right. State or defense, do you have any questions of the officer? Um, briefly, um, Mr. Wallace, um, yes, um, so you came on after the local ISO? Uh, he completed state. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Um, I noticed that uh, one of the recommendations is, is gang, gang diversion program. What's the, the um, reasoning for that? Uh, gang diversion program is because after a review of a database called Text Gang, uh, the probationer is a documented gang member of the Mandingo Warriors. Um, And uh, let's see, and um, on, on uh, June 14th, 2023, um, I guess I'm reading that uh, the probationer was supposed to come to court that day. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and what happened that day? Uh, as far as I was advised, the probationer okay. showed up to okay. court. Okay. So that objection will be sustained. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, no further questions, Ron. Any questions? Mr. Wallace, can you tell us what things that Mr. Scott has done and has completed? Yes, I can. Uh, the probationer has completed state ISF. Um, he did not qualify for the felony drug court. Uh, his safe PU was waived as well. He also completed uh, 40 hours of community service, uh, basically waived due to COVID vaccine. And he has also completed uh, weekly UAs for 30 days back in 21. Uh, a TAP evaluation conducted in 2019, and then also completed, uh, excuse me, uh, dual diagnosis outpatient back in 2017, as well as completed BIP once in 2017 as well, and then uh, provided a DNA sample as well. Okay, and has he paid anything towards anything? Uh, the last payment that I have on file for the probationer is back in February of 2023. Okay. And when did you get assigned to this case? What's the date that you picked this case up? Yes. Uh, let me go ahead here. Uh, the probationer entered into ISP in December of 22, and I was also assigned to him at that time as well. When in 2022, I'm sorry? 12-9-22. Uh, and does your do your computer records show uh, what he completed or what he did prior to 12-9-2022? Yes, it does. Okay, and those were some of the things that you just told us, correct? Yes, ma'am. And is it your policy if people have not paid or have not completed programs, you recommend termination, or I'm sorry, you recommend revocation? Uh, not for uh, lack of payments and things like that. Um, typically, what we will recommend in those regards for, uh, like, if there's still money to be owed to the court, we will recommend extensions and, and such. But if they have not completed certain programs, you're going to recommend revocation pretty much across the board, right? Uh, not necessarily, ma'am. It's a it's a case by case basis. Okay. And um, do you know how many days that Mr. Scott has spent in jail during this period of time? The last four to six years that he's been on probation? Uh, I am, I'm not aware of the total amount of time that he has spent uh, in jail during his probation term, no ma'am. Okay, does your computer show that he has been incarcerated for different violations? Uh, yes, due to uh, MTR warrants and things like that. Okay, and also awaiting different types of whether or not he's gonna be allowed into certain programs, waiting to see if feds are available? Yes ma'am. Passing. Okay. Um, and, and just briefly, um, you mentioned that um, he has not done anything, um, I, I think, under the ISP supervision. Is that when you took over? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Po post release from ISF, he was placed into the ISP program. And like I said, that in, in consulting with the court, the, the court um, advised me that the, the, two, the two key things that they wanted the probationer to go ahead and complete was BIP and restitution, and I, I have neither progress on either of those. Um, did you specifically um, inform him of that? Yes, I did. And did he, did he seem to understand that? Yes. Um, where is Mr. Scott um, supposed to be residing on probation? Okay, and when was the last time that probation was able to verify that he was there? That was back in... Uh, to do May of 23. Um, have there been any concerns as far as um, if he's still at that residency? Uh, yes, I received anonymous information back We're in June. Of Just one second. Uh, the objection will be sustained. I'm assuming it's to hearsay. Yes. Okay. All right. And, and, and just yes or no, not not what they said. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, no further questions, John. All right. <laughs> Mr. Wallace, did you receive some kind of paperwork for Mr. Scott and that enabled him to get on the waiting list for VIP? Uh, not to my recollection, no, ma'am. You aren't aware that actually contained within the MTR that the judge has before her, it says he was ninth on the waiting list? Is that for BIP or another question? Yeah, that's for BIP. You're not aware of that? 
He says he's ninth on the waiting list. Yep. Where, and you said that is on the court summary, madam? Yes. If you do not mind me asking, where do you see that on the court summary? I don't have it in front of me, sir. The judge has it. All right. Well, it's uh, the court has read all of the documents. Mm -hmm. That's something you were not aware of, correct? That is correct. We'll pass. All right. Is there anything else for uh, Mr. Scott? No. I'm sorry, Mr. Wallace. No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wallace, for zooming in. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, madam. All right. All right. Is there anything else before the court makes its decision? Judge, the only other thing that I'd like the court to know is uh, Mr. Scott's wife is here, um, even though she's indicated in some of the violation reports. Um, she thinks that he's a great dad. She likes him being All right. And what is his... her name? Uh, you know what, Judge? I don't have it in front of me. I is it Angelica Scott? Yes. All right. So when was the no contact order lifted on that? Because I ordered no contact. The whole contact. No, no, no. I ordered no contact in my order. I believe, Judge, when I... All, I believe it was amended yeah. to a no contact. All right. Let me see where that was. Oh, I wish we had Mr. Sp Mr. Wallace. Thank <laughs> you, President. All right, if you want to have her come forward, but if if that no contact order was changed, it was not for me. It was from another judge, but she can come forward. I, I honestly, I don't think she wants to come forward. Okay. To be honest, I'm just giving the court summary that he has been supportive of the four children uh, that they have together. Um, they've been together. For oh, a she long. says she wants to come forward. Okay. Uh, Melissa, I yes. just received a police report. I'm coming out. Yeah. 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 Hi. All right, State, is there a police report involving her? Yes. All right, then you may not want to testify. It's, it's fine. Well, no, because let me it's just... It's not... Um, let me just tell you some issues. If there's a police report where you call the police oh, okay. on... Okay. Well, let me just finish, okay? If there's a police report, and uh, his counsel will be able to tell you this, if there's a police report where you call the police on him, for any type of family violence or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. And if you wanna come before this court and say, everything's been going great. He didn't do what I call the police for. I haven't seen the police report. I don't wanna know what it says. I've never seen the state or the police pursue charges against someone who accuses somebody of family violence. And then they wanna to come to court and say that they didn't do it. I have yet to see somebody have charges brought against them. But that being the case, if that is what that says, then what will end up happening is I'll need to have an attorney appointed to you to let you know there, there is a potential maybe for criminal charges. Yes, ma'am. So I'm assuming what you're going to come and tell me is that he's a great father. You want him in your life. You don't want him to go to prison. Um, no, ma'am. Oh, you're going to be saying that you want him to go to prison? I want him to get help. Oh, okay. All right. Um, he he is a great father. Okay. No, because she's going to need an attorney to it's represent. It's not a police report. It, it, it's, it's not a, a police report. It, it's an. It, I hadn't reviewed it. I just got sent it. It's an incident detail report. What do you right. object? Can I see the report? Any objections to the court receipt? Seeing what the report is about, so I'll know whether or not she needs an attorney. Is not. She is not the reporting person. Okay. So and. It's a welfare check. So. All right. All right. So, so do we need her as a witness? She's going to say he needs help. Does anybody want to call her as a witness? I would like to call her as a witness. All right. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, ma'am. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Angelica Maria Scott. I'm sorry. Can you repeat Angelica that? Angelica Maria Scott. State. Um, Ms. Scott, um, are you aware that um, Mr. Scott has been um, reporting to probation that he is residing, um, I believe, with his, I forgot what you said, a, a mother or um, 
in, in San Antonio. I'm going to object to hearsay. All right. That'll be sustained. Okay. Um, when was the last time you, you saw Mr. Scott prior to today? Um, October, I mean, I'm sorry, June 11th of 2023. Okay. Um, do you recall the police getting called to your home on June 13th of 2023? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you know sign language? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you sign to them that day when, they, when you opened the door? Yes, I did. And what did you tell them in sign language? Um, that he was there. And why did you feel the need to use sign language instead of speaking? Because Mr. Scott had told me that if he went back to jail, that his family was going to kill me. All right. All right, I believe that's enough. Do you have any questions, defense? Scott, what, what are you asking the court for today? I want the court to give him help. I don't think a long-term sentencing is right because Mr. Scott does have a drug and alcohol problem around family members and friends. I tried to help him. I tried to get him help. He says he's grown, but he's a wonderful father. But as far as a spouse, no. I just want him what's best because he is there for my child. He's been there for my child since she was 16 months. And their bond is no, like, you couldn't tell that's not his child. I want help from him. But a long-term sentencing, no. I would, if he can stay away from people, then I, I know he can be best. I know he can be better. All right. Thank you so much for letting me know. All right. Oh, can I need this mask? Sure. Great. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else from either side? No, you're not. All right. Mr. Scott. I want you to know that I, I listen to testimony. I listen to everything that everyone says. I give people chances when they're on probation. You've had a lot of chances on probation and all you had to do was do what I was asking you to do. And this is, I think, one, two, three. This is your fourth motion to revoke. And people will always come to me and you know what they say? Well, I can't go to prison because I'll lose my job. I don't know why people don't think about that when you're on probation. So the court is finding violation of condition two and two true. Court will grant the motion. And I want you to know your revocation is not because of the witness who just testified. This revocation is because of you and what you did not do, because you have a contract with the court. The contract is not with your attorney. It's not with the state. It's not with your family members. It's not with Ms. Scott. Do you understand? All right. The court is going to grant the motion. The court is going to send it you to 10 years in the prison, give you credit for any time served, credit for any inpatient treatment. There's a $1,500 fine. Time and money to run it is to run concurrent. There's an affirmative finding of family balance. There's to be no contact with Angelica or Angelica Scott, Amir, A M I R, Allen, Bashan, B I N S H A W N, Allen. Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S, Allen. There's to be no contact with them. There's to be no contact with them through third parties. Do you understand? That's yes or no. Yes, right. Going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Uh, yes, I reviewed something. All right. You have a limited right to appeal, and that right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you are in community supervision. Do you understand? Sure. All right. And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. And because this is an affirmative finding of family violence, you're also not allowed to own any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what that means, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? 
All right. And I've given you uh, credit for time in any patient inpatient treatment that you've completed. All right. You're going to have, we can go off the record. You're going to have to do better. You understand? All right. Good luck to you. It would be a Yes.